The M2 MacBook Air has been around for three months now and I was using it daily all that time and I loved it, I hated it, and after three months I can make a final conclusion. In this video I will share my thoughts on the M2 MacBook Air after three months of use. Did my opinion change over time? Should you buy it? Who is it for? Is it a waste of money? Stick around to find out. To make everything more interesting, I will mix together good and bad things I found. Let's start with the body, build quality, materials, etc. To describe all that, I will use only one word, exceptional. The aluminum body is cold and smooth, seams are almost non-existent, every little element has its place and it fits there perfectly. And don't get me started on the thinness of it. The body is so thin that I almost can't feel it. But enough with the praise. Ergonomically, I have a few questions. First, the wet shape in the previous Air was better for typing, since the edge wasn't hurting the hands that much. Now the edge is raised noticeably above the surface, which makes long typing sessions kinda uncomfortable. But if you reposition your hands slightly, I guess this issue can be dealt with. The second issue is much smaller, somehow the rubber feet aren't as grippy as I hoped, and now each time I open the laptop I hold it down so it won't slip. The third issue I've encountered is dust. The laptop, despite being passively cooled, has accumulated quite some dust in the space between the hinge and the top case. It's not a deal breaker, but nonetheless. Additionally, I would like to mention scratches. My model is in space gray and pores are not yet scratched, but some people online have complained about this color and midnight. Their pores are really badly scratched, but I guess this comes down to how careful you are with your devices. Let's cover the screen now. Surely after 14 inch MacBook Pro, I am extremely picky in terms of displays, but let me tell you, this screen is phenomenal, especially when compared to the previous Air. The bezels are slimmer all around and the notch freshens the design quite a bit. It is also bigger and brighter too, when working outdoors that extra 100 nits are noticeable. Plus it now supports P3 white color gamut, which results in gorgeous colors, but there's always a but. But I would really like the blacks to be blacker. When watching movies, stuff those dark gray borders are just too visible. I would also appreciate a slightly higher refresh rate, 60 Hz would be good enough for non-pro laptops, but Apple be Apple. We won't see that for quite some time in entry-level Macs. If you're planning on simple photo editing, this screen will be enough, but if you're planning on pro-level color grading, you should save some money and buy a 14-inch Pro, which has mini LED, higher brightness and higher refresh rate. Here is another thing for you, the speakers. This part is probably the hardest one to cover for me since I use AirPods most of the time, but when the internal speakers of the MacBook were firing, I experienced no problems whatsoever. My ears didn't bleed at all, everything was great. Maybe those speakers aren't the loudest ones or the best sounding ones, but man, the laptop is a little over one centimeter thick. What were you expecting? For such a small enclosure, the sound quality is more than satisfactory. The only issue I have is the speaker placement. I really prefer front-facing speakers on previous Macs. In M2 Air, they are situated where vents were in previous models. This placement makes sound less directed. You don't feel surrounded by sound as much, but again, headphones to help mitigate these minor inconveniences. The keyboard. I really enjoy typing on it. Plus, visually, I think it looks so much better with gray aluminum underlay than pro laptops with black underlay. Keys are more visually pronounced, more visible, the clickiness is spot on, the key travel is also great, the backlight works fine and accurately. Again, using this keyboard is almost always a pure joy. Almost always, because I do find some aspects of it unsatisfying. The first one being the backlight. It works great and all, but too much light slips under the keys. So in dark environments, it looks like an old machine. Macs with problematic butterfly keyboards didn't have that issue. The second caveat for me is the row of function keys. I just don't find it all that useful. Dedicated mission control key, spotlight search key, and Siri or dictation key are simply useless. I would prefer them to be switched with, for example, keyboard backlight controls, camera on off button or something like that. 
that Apple's experts surely know better than me what people need, but hey, that's my video. Before we talk performance, I feel like covering port selection is needed. There are two ways of looking at it, a general perspective and the creator's perspective. For a regular person, two USB-C ports will be enough. There are numerous dongles available, so picking up something nice won't be a problem. However, for anyone who's trying to do more, these two ports would be a bottleneck. I personally find it inconvenient to use a dongle just to connect an external monitor. I think adding HDMI and SD card reader won't cost much, but everyone will appreciate it. Apple, hear us, we need more ports. One thing that certainly was never enough is disk space. 256 gig SSD is too small for comfortable file management. I had to monitor weekly whether my disk was full or not, deleting apps, relocating files, uploading documents to the cloud, Yuck, don't like that. Plus, doing all that manually reaves some residual files, which isn't really good. All that useless stuff just keeps piling up, slowing the laptop down. If you're going to buy the same base model MacBook Air, my suggested solution will be helpful. I used CleanMyMac X to monitor and clean my storage drive. Temperature monitoring, protecting from malware, uninstalling apps, etc. Now I don't have to worry about overloading my SSD or pushing it too hard. Real-time monitoring. Monitoring. With such baseline machines, proper performance monitoring is a must. The creators of CleanMyMac X are kindly sponsoring this video, and with the code WINER10 you can purchase the app at 10% discount. Okay, okay, you're starving for drama. Then performance it is. As you well know, I have a base model with 8 gigs of unified memory, 256 gig SSD, and 8 core GPU. Now, you're probably wondering, how can this underpowered piece of tech be useful? Well, it's good you've waited, because I do have something to say about the performance. It's adequate, maybe even surprising sometimes, nothing more, nothing less. You really can't expect much from an entry-level, passively cooling MacBook, but for $1,200 you want to get some of that horsepower. I can't say that it really delivers that performance. Let me explain. When you are performing small, short tasks, everything is smooth and responsive, but sometimes even easy tasks can work unreliably. For example, my most common problem is website reloads. It seems like that SSD really slow things down. I regularly use Google Docs and those tabs are memory hungry, real RAM eaters, even in Safari, but even with swap they can glitch out sometimes, turn white for no reason, stop responding or just reload the second you're not looking at it. That's frustrating, it really is. It's not a deal breaker, I have only noticed this issue with Google Docs, but each year the websites become more and more demanding, so what can we expect in a few years. I leave that without an answer. Also, I've noticed that even native apps work with slowdowns. For instance, Pages, an Apple-made text editor, gives me beach balls almost every time I try to change fonts. Strange, right? Bizarre even. In the light of all I said already, discussing video editing sounds unnecessary, but this laptop did surprise me in this regard. Everything is smooth and responsive in Final Cut, just like on Pro models. The only difference you will notice is substantially longer export time. Even with hardware encoding engine, video rendering takes much longer. But I can't blame Apple for that. This laptop isn't designed with video editing in mind. So let's give it a little break, okay? This is not a laptop for heavy users. If you are into professional editing, you shouldn't even consider this laptop. Better pick up a 14-inch Pro. There are a lot of discounts on Amazon or just buy Apple's refurbished one. It seems like two things are left on the agenda. Battery life and camera. The camera is the easiest one to cover. It's great. For Zoom meetings, FaceTime and occasional video calls, it's perfect. Microphones do their job reliably without failing. The camera isn't as good as on the best Windows laptops. But let's not forget that 99% of all laptops still have 480 or 720p webcams. Now let's move on to battery life. I have only one word here. Wow. Just wow. The battery life is simply amazing. I almost forgot what charging is with this laptop. 10 hours of movies, easy. Full day of browsing, piece of cake. And it only gets better as soon as you turn on low power mode. 10 hours become 14, a day, a day and a half. Believe me, battery life will not disappoint you. The only thing that bugs me is the battery health. After three months, my health is down to 99% at only 39 charges. It seems strange to me because previous laptops have maintained 100% health after 100 cycles or more. Bear that in mind. So what is my overall impression of this laptop? Is it worth the money? 
money. After three months, my opinion hasn't changed a bit. In some areas, it's phenomenal and in others, pretty average. For $1,200, I was expecting slightly more, but I can't call it a waste of money. I don't regret buying it, and if you can pick it up at a lower price than Apple charges, do it. But try to opt for models with 16 gigs of RAM. I can easily see teachers or students using this laptop without issues. Just casual people. If you are aiming at somewhat professional tasks, better pay extra for 14-inch Pro. But please never buy the M2 13-inch Pro. And what do you think of this laptop? Do we feel the same? You and I? Leave your impressions and reviews in the comments, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and see you in the next one.